Dead in a crack? Yep. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Here we go. Turn it off. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Strom. This is my favorite husband, favorite guitar player, Scott Sorkin. And uh, we're going to play some tunes for you, starting with one of our favorites.
for joining us here. Um, it's kind of fun to actually play some tunes, put on some clothes. <laughs> some clothes. You can't see us from the waist down. We have our slippers on. <laughs> what are you going to do? Um, so thanks for joining us, and thanks to San Jose Jazz for setting this up, this cool series live from home. So uh, that was, of course, the Jitterbug Waltz by the great Fats Waller. How'd you like to write a tune that lasts that long? It's really great. Um, this next tune is, uh, it's Scott's arrangement of a standard called My Shining Hour. And I'm gonna dedicate this to one of my students who uh, is a worker in a hospital and she's going to drop a couple classes because she needs to be there. She really feels like she needs to be in the hospital as much as possible, help as much as possible. So we're going to dedicate this to her. My shining hour. This will be my shining hour. My dreams, your face and flower in the darkness of the night, and like the lights of home before me, or an angel watching for me, this will be. A shining hour till I'm with you again. 
Christine. It's also for Judy. She loves that song. So I have a couple of questions to answer here. Let's see. Uh, tell us about a recent project that's very near to your heart, Moving Day, the music of John Shifflett. So our, our most recent album is Moving Day. Um, all the compositions of the great bass player John Shiflett. It was a long, long, long time friend of ours and uh, with Jason Lewis and a uh, stalwart bass player in the South Bay and all over the Bay Area. I was asking Jason, I think maybe John was on a thousand albums, probably. He was the kind of bass player that when uh, people got him in their band, they were like, this is my dream band. We're set, because I have Shifflet in the band. So uh, we recorded it at Fantasy Studios, uh, not long before they actually closed their doors, with lots of John's friends um, from this area. Uh, Jason Lewis, Ken Okada, Jeff Lewis, John Worley, Aaron Lington, um, John Gove. David. Yeah, David Baruzzi, John Arbor. Dan Robbins, Rick Vanderveer, and uh, it's really a project that's uh, near and dear to our hearts. We did a, we've played a lot of concerts of that music. It's not only that; it's music that 
was written by our friend. Mm -hmm. But the compositions are really great, and they're really fun to play and explore and, uh, and find new material in every time we play it. So, so that's, that's a cool thing. So I'm well, just so musical. I, when I'm doing arrangements, um, I, I always have a voice of John in the back of my head kind of saying, eh, that doesn't, that <laughs> doesn't really fly. You know, he really could, could set you on the right course musically at any yeah. time. And he did that a lot in the studio when we were recording and when other people were recording, when I was an engineer on sessions and, um, John would not say much unless it obviously, you know, it was obvious that the music needed something. Right. And then John would chip in and say, well, this is what I think might work here. And he was always spot on. Every time I heard him make a suggestion, it was musically incredibly spot yeah. on. Uh, and he played that way. He heard music that way. And he was just lived with that kind of integrity all the yeah. time. So. And we uh, recorded that album in partnership with San Jose State University, uh, where John was a teacher. So I have another question here. Let's see. You have often played in performances of Pamela Rose's Blues as a Woman's Project. It's for me. We're actually going to have Kim Nally and Tammy Hall on the series next week. <laughs> Lucky people. I'll be watching. Were you a part of the conception of this piece? Uh, I played in uh, Pamela's first project called Wild Women of the Blues, <laughs> Wild Women of Song, that uh, was about the great women uh, songwriters of the jazz era. And then when she, she actually put Blues as a Woman together with uh, the great guitar player Pat Wilder in mind um, and wrote it kind of in her voice, um, I came on shortly after it uh, was off the ground and have been... Uh, you know, proud and really enthusiastic member ever since. Uh, I get to play once in a while with Kim Nally, which is a really great pleasure. And uh, Tammy and I are best of friends. And uh, yeah, I think we'll we'll play another tune and then we'll answer a couple more questions. Thank you. Let me switch. Okay. All right, this is our arrangement of uh, Blackbird.
So um, someone was asking, uh, how does being a married couple affect your collaborations and what are the benefits and the drawbacks? What drawbacks? <laughs> what? Uh, Zero. <laughs> clearly Zero the drawbacks. benefits are we're here in our house. We're musicians. We get to make music together, even in, in, in times like these. Um, We've always had a great musical connection since we met in college. And uh, not really drawbacks. We've, we've seen some pitfalls with other musical families, uh, family units. Um, so it, it can be tough, you know, but we've, we've managed to somehow avoid those. those I, I, luckily. Can count on one hand, maybe the number of no. times you know we were stressed out before a gig or something, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. So we have this connection, you know, for a long time, and and um, it's always a treat when we get to play together. We play uh, in separate things, but uh, we we get to have a, a band of our own together. This this duo, but the quartet with. Um, Jason Lewis and Ken Okada that we've played with a bunch. A larger group of that, Johnson and Novo Tempo. Um, stuff with borders. Tammy Hall. Crossing Borders, our, our collaboration with great Canadians, Jennifer Scott and Renee Wurst. And we're looking forward to doing something else with them. I'm looking forward to a new project, um, 
a duo record with Tammy Hall. So we were we were about to start getting together and playing tunes and and really zero in on the um, the repertoire um, when this we got stalled. So um, look for that in the future for sure. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and we're also working on a new record with Ed Johnson and Novo Tempo. Scott's able to do a lot of that work here. Um, why don't you talk about being a, an engineer at home too? Yeah, well, um, we have a great engineer on that project, Gary Mankin, who's in San Francisco, um, and he is sending out audio files so that we can record some of our parts on our own since we can't all get together as a group. We've done some sessions with the whole ensemble, um, people coming down from Washington and from Canada, you know, Jennifer. And um, so now we're isolated, so I'm doing some of my parts here for that project. And uh, yeah, thank goodness for the technology. Let's just yeah. <laughs> do some of these things that, that make it a little bit more bearable to deal with this right now. Yeah, and we're both teaching, teaching lessons online. Uh, continuing our students and picking up a couple more. Uh, we have one more tune to play here, and um, we thank you for tuning in and checking it out. We're, we're saying a big hi and big kisses to family and friends out there. Um, and we can't wait to see you in person and hug you. So sending virtual hugs right now to everybody. So we're going to close it out with one of... Uh, our favorite standards. Let's see, how are
Listening, everybody. Stay, stay safe, healthy, happy. Take care of yourselves.